Welcome to the session on uh, financial risk management um, offered by GAP, Global Association of Risk Professional Financial Risk Management as uh, two parts, part one and part two. There are two exams, FRM part one and FRM part two. FRM part one concentrates on financial risk management, the foundations of financial risk management, it covers around 20% weightage, quantitative analysis, 20% weightage, valuation and risk model, 30%, and financial markets and products, 30%. These four parts will be asked in the examination as per the weightage mentioned there. We need to score equivalent weightage in the exam, like 20%, 20%, 30% and 30%. Let us now discuss about the first uh, unit in detail, the first section in detail, foundations of risk management which covers 20% weightage. Foundations of risk management. So here we need to focus on the foundation of risk management, various risks faced by an organization, how the risk management okay, will add value to the organization and control the risk. What action you take on mitigating the risk, reducing the risk. So the topics which we are going to discuss here include the corporate risk governance, okay. a trade-off between risk and return, whether we should accept the risk or you know respond to the risk. Construction of uh, the portfolios which are efficient and beneficial to the company, the asset pricing models and the frameworks for ERM, enterprise risk management, data quality management, how to deal with the data. Then um, major financial disasters, we'll take examples and we have a review on it. This is in a nutshell the total you know topic which we discussed on foundations of uh, risk management. Let us now work on what is a corporate risk. How to define a risk? A risk is nothing but the variability of outcomes. Variable uh, variability of outcome means we expect we expect that our performance is going to be better. Our performance is going to be worse. But it may be different from what we expect. When the outcome of an expectation is different, then we call it as variability. Variance, the difference. So how much variable, how much the variability we have between our forecast, what we expect, and what we receive, the outcome. This is called variability. So a risk is nothing but the variability of outcomes than the expected items. It can be in earnings, it can be in the assets. So our business may have lots of you know risks so the companies face risk based on various issues these risks are classified into business risks and financial risks let us discuss in detail one by one what is a business risk a business risk is 
a risk which is purely related to the business it depends upon its uh, you know own uh, strategy its manpower cost of the input this and all are related to business risk in other words we can say that it is an industry risk which can be diversified a risk which can be diversified is called business risk whereas financial risks that occur due to changes in the interest rates it is not in our hand whereas this business development marketing decisions new product development strategy manpower employment of manpower the training their transformation this and all related to businesses whereas interest rates market movements this and all are not in a hand they are called as financial risks so the risk management process when we identify that these are the risks are going to be faced by our company what measures we take to manage the risk managing the risk is not nothing but taking an action on the risk taking an action on the risk like we may take an action to reduce the risk we may take an action to compensate the risk we may take an action to avoid the risk so what action you take to reduce the risk is called risk management process so the, the the risk management process begins with identifying of the risk exposures what kind of risk our company is going to face based on that we take action to mitigate the risk to reduce the risk so here the tools which we use to manage the risk include quantitative measures qualitative measures and erm quantitative measures are expressed in numbers qualitative measure expressed in like reputation etc whereas enterprise risk management is the uh, action taken by the management some of some of you know the risk management tools include stop loss stop loss means we have a quantitative measure wherein when the value goes at this particular level it is going to be stopped we don't go beyond this we don't go beyond this so we have an acceptability at a certain level so when it reaches at this level we don't want to incur further loss so we come out of this say for example our company wants to make profit on a particular share in which we invested at the rate of $25 so the market is highly volatile and the price of the share is going to say fall 23 you booked a loss of $2 here but not you have not taken any action 21 20 19 stop so your trading will be stopped at 19 if you don't take any action to mitigate the risk it may further go down so the trade here will automatically exit at 19 booking a loss of 6 if you do not take an action say for example what happens this order is still open and it may fall down to even 12 in due course so when it goes down to 12 so obviously the rate the loss instead of 19 it would be 12 the loss instead of 6 it would be 13 so the stop loss is kept at 19 by reducing the loss from 13 dollars to 6 dollars notional limits so we we add some values here at different you know dollar amounts 
which are committed to trade like not beyond this not beyond this so what happens is when we sell a particular item to buy in later it has to be bought at say maximum price of 25 so if it go beyond that automatically the trade will be closed like in the previous one we said 19 at the time of selling at the time of buying it should not go beyond this say i i want to buy 100 shares of a company at a price open price so it may go price it to say 25 it may go to 27 also so if you don't say that if the price if the price goes beyond 25 this order should be cancelled in that case this order will be automatically cancelled it will not accept at 27 okay so otherwise it will be uh, uh, you know executed at a highest price so we may put notional limits we conduct scenario analysis scenario analysis means it's a scientific technique wherein we use different scenarios by calculating the outcomes of the each and every scenario so that what happens is it alerts us at a particular level to to accept so we have scenario one scenario two scenario three we conduct these different scenarios and we see the outcome of each scenario if this is not applicable this may happen if this doesn't happen this may happen so it's a predefined scenario based on that you can take action in the scenarios we get wide range of outcomes stress tests stress test here once we know that the potential outcomes from different ranges what is the stress your company is going to face between this scenario and this scenario here what maximum difference you will have if not accepted at this level we have a separate topic on stress test with a you know a, a, an example uh, we'll take up one uh, you know case study on stress test duration duration most of the you know equity markets as the duration increases the risk also will increase so the duration and risk will have a positive correlation risk increases when duration increases likewise be beta a beta tells us that what is the you know the risk included in a particular activity so we need to study what is the duration of particular investment or particular you know action on which what risk we are going to expect market risk market risk is the risk which is common to all a market risk is also known as systematic risk in market risk the risk is applicable to all not for a company therefore we call it as a systematic risk or non diversifiable risk say for example a uh, forex say for example uh, we deal with uh, a different currency foreign currency units we have some payables here in foreign currency units the foreign currency becomes stronger so automatically all the importers in our country will have an impact of the strength of the foreign currency unit say for example tomorrow dollar price a uh, dollar price strength then whatever whatever the supply or importers we have here in our country will have an impact of the increase in the dollar value government policies regulation government policy and regulations in the foreign country weather conditions this and all will have impact on all the businesses in this country so this type of any risk we call it as market risk because it is applicable to everyone it is also known as systematic risk it is not related to a particular industry if it is related to a particular industry we call it as business risk unsystematic risk 
liquidity risk liquidity risk is the risk of not having enough money to meet our requirements say a company does not have enough money to meet its current obligations we have a current obligation of say 5 million so we need 5 million dollars for immediate payments what happens if you do not have enough current assets means readily available funds say we have only 3 million dollars so the remaining 2 million dollars will have bad impact on the reputation of the business for the non payment of the bills on time this is what called as liquidity risk say for example salaries are not paid on time suppliers or creditors are not paid on time utility bills are not paid on time so this creates a bad reputation on the firms even if we have say 15 million loan with the bank 15 million dollars loan with the bank may not spoil the reputation because it's a long term item but the liquid liquidity position short term financial position of a company wherein the company is not able to pay 1 million dollars to a supplier supplier will give trouble from next time onwards say a company is not able to pay say 300000 dollars on utility bills electricity water telephone etc so it will have a bad impact on the business there will be no electricity in the factory other side 15 million long term liability with a bank you can manage it but 300000 dollars with a say a, a utility department bills not paid on time no connection no electricity connection no power in the factory so it will create problem okay so this is of two types liquidity risk is of two types one a product liquidity which we also call it as market liquidity so what happens here moving the market due to the size of the trade necessary to manage the risk so we do not have a particular product to move according to the market requirement we do not have enough stock we do not have enough market to 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 you know manage with the requirements as per the size of the market it's called product liquidity we do not have enough cash flows to meet our you know current requirements we are unable to pay the requirements cash requirements on time it is called a cash liquidity credit risk credit risk you know when we um, give loan to our customers when we sell goods to our customers on time we should we should be able to you know find out whether the you know the party is able to pay us or not credit risk usually is analyzed by credit com rating companies giving triple a or a plus 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 depending upon the liquidity position of the company whether the company is able to meet whether the company is able to pay if if any adverse conditions take place that is to be analyzed in a credit risk if a company does not does not you know maintain enough funds to meet the requirements like liquidity risk for the other company it is called credit risk say for example company b is facing liquidity risk this company is facing liquidity risk by not realizing company a sold goods to company b with three months credit so company a is in credit risk by allowing a credit of say you know three million those three months credit because the company b is already facing liquidity risk when the company company a pressurizes for the payment after three months company b may 
become insolvent. So it will be unable to, it, the company A, B will be not in a position to pay company A. So company A is facing credit risk. Operational risk. It is a company specific again. Company specific. If the company's ineffective, ineffective operation strategies wherein the company faces risk on daily basis. It can be a, a strategy failure. It can be a fraud in the company, mismanagement, yeah, or you know, ineffective um, staff members do not have a product setup, proper setup, okay, or do not have strategy in the business. It's called as operational risk. A market risk. Market risk. A systematic risk or same so market risk is applicable for all the companies not a company specific like prices input prices change so what happens here input price change due to foreign currency strengthens so it is applicable to overall market not to a particular company interest rate risks this happens when you lend heavily or when you borrow heavily. Say for example, we borrowed, we borrowed $10 million, $10 million at 6% rate of interest to be repaid in say for example, five years. Five years. Okay, so this, this amount is going to be repaid in the fifth year. All 10 million will be paid in the fifth year. Say bonds. Now the interest rates fell down to say for example 5.2%. A company which is recently formed who is a competitor to us will be paying at the rate of 5.2 on the bonds issued this year which is also a five year period. Whereas we are paying 6%. This will have an impact on our profits. So that 0 0.08 into 10 million will have an impact on our earnings. So what happens is when we borrow money or we lend money, the change fluctuations in the interest rates will have an impact on our earnings. It is called interest rate risk. So uh, swaps here are used to, to mitigate the interest rate risks. Equity price risk. Equity means the shares. The share price may go up, may go down. So that's the reason why what we do is we diversify by creating a portfolio. Portfolio in particular, a portfolio you may have risky investments, less risky investments and you know no risk investments in other words we can say risk free investments so it creates a portfolio so that we can diversify the risk foreign exchange risk this happens due to you know foreign currency payments or foreign currency receipts when we have a currency which is to be received in future say for example we have a, 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 a currency like gbp great britain funds our local currency is say for example USD. USD. Say we have 1.2 GBP. 1.2 USD equals to 1 GBP. We have 100,000 GBP receivable. That at the moment it is going to be 120,000 US dollars. But if anything changes in these prices, you may receive less USD. If GBP becomes stronger, what happens here? You receive more. But if it becomes weaker, you will receive less. So due to change in the you know, foreign currency rates, what is the impact on your profit? And if you want to reduce the risk, what you need to do is you need to swap or you need to act, uh, uh, you need to you know, uh, hedge the exchange rate risks. 
commodity same like currency what we discussed here any um, commodity which is going to be imported or exported whose prices will change from time to time so to 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 you know um, reduce the risk of the fluctuations in the prices of the commodity we do hedging process portfolio credit risk entire portfolio may have sometimes risk because of the market risk because of the government policies because of the you know environment economic conditions etc say for example even if you have a portfolio of 10 different types of investments in a domestic portfolio all this will have an impact due to government policy or all this will have due to you know the economic condition of the country so that such a risk is called as portfolio risk here operational risk different types of operational risk include legal and regulatory risk business risk strategic risk reputation risk and systematic risk systemic risk not systematic risk systemic risk systematic risk is you know a market risk which cannot be avoided and which is applicable to all systemic risk is different let us discuss in detail one by one so let us discuss this different types of operational risk in one by one say legal risk legal risk or regulatory risk which company faces due to change in the you know law change in the regulation the best example is now indian government is introducing gst this is applicable to all the companies in india this is a regulatory risk government policy will have impact on all the businesses due to government policy due to regulatory risk you may have a legal risk okay any law risk due to change in the law okay business risk it is purely depending on you know the our management decisions if our budget is not good forecast is not good or there is no proper planning in the production setup supply chain management inventory purchase policies say for example we do not have a proper purchase policy like most of the companies have three supplier policy three supplier policy means we ask the price of the goods terms and condition for the regular purchases from at least three suppliers we evaluate many suppliers but what we do is we evaluate among many suppliers we select oh, 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 at least three suppliers and we call them as approved vendors these are called approved vendors so we apply these three vendors in our system so that whenever we purchase there will be some percentage like s1 we should purchase 30 percent s2 we should purchase at least 45 percent of the requirement s3 remaining 25 percent so that what happens is no single supplier will induce our purchase management or purchase department to buy goods at a higher prices so that the purchase department will get some benefit no so what we do is we our company at a whole evaluate the suppliers and make them as approved vendors input in the system uh, so always whenever you purchase proportionately this amount will go to different suppliers as assigned in the system not only this like cash management in the company the policies and procedures what policies we have whether the policies are stronger or weak whether we have proper internal control internal auditing internal auditing and action on the failure of internal controls or the effective controls uh, uh, are maintained well or any poor controls are you know uh, uh, discarded and new controls are added it is purely related related to a particular business organization we can say that it is a non-market risk 
a strategy risk strategy in a company may give us heavy profits with no surprises or a poor strategy in the company will give large amount of losses like a strategy include entering into a new market launching a new product or taking a you know decision to improve the business operations or you know uh, uh, spending some money on corporate res res social responsibility so we have a strategy well in advance to get some benefit to get some benefit so but if the strategy doesn't work it will have a bad impact on our profits and reputation reputation risk sometimes a product or service may uh, may give a good impression among the customers so that what happens the brand value will increase but if any issue comes which is highlighted and will have a bad impact on the business operations so it takes it takes much longer time to get back to the customer base so the reputation risk will have bad impact on the brand of the company like some companies face say a company has 500 product lines among these even five products give negative results this goes to media that this product is from this company is giving bad results so will have impact on the brand of the company so entire products will go you know into bad reputation this happens for the happened for maggie in india and some cold drinks long back cold drinks so this will bring out the reputation risk to the company systematic systemic risk systemic risk systemic risk means one one risk will have an impact on the other activity this will have impact on the other so slowly it's a chain reaction you know it's a chain reaction one risk will lead to the happening of the other risk it goes on like this so so that in future what happens is entire the you know system will be collapsed it is not that there is no prob there is a problem here there is no problem here but because of this risk it will have an impact because of one risk it will spread to the other is same like virus say one product one product is becoming you know uh, giving trouble in the market customers are not happy with this product it goes to a legal you know legal uh, issues then just this product will be highlighted but the company name is more highlighted here so if the company has other products this will have the production slowdown of this 500 products then cash flow problems then what happens here suppliers will create problems then employees won't get salary on time so it goes on that the entire organization such a system is called a systemic risk the chance of failure of one company starts up and the reaction brings to the entire system down this is the end of the session on uh, various types of risks and uh, in the next session we will discuss about the risk management what to how to react to the risk we'll see you there in the next session